Well, hi again, everybody, and as always, welcome to high school basketball. What an incredible night we have tonight in Division Three. It is the regional semifinal here at the Elida Fieldhouse as the Liberty Center Tigers are going to take on the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans. What an incredible night we have. Welcome, everyone. My name is John Zerby. Beside me tonight, Evan Skilleter. Evan, what a great matchup we have coming this evening. Yeah, really looking forward to this one. Two teams, identical records, 22 and three, two teams that like to push the tempo. And hey, when you get into the regionals, it gets really, really exciting. So we're in for some good basketball. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, and not only is it some incredible basketball tonight, but we have the environment already, a big crowd from Liberty Center. We know Ottawa Glendorf is going to bring a great crowd as well. The environment at the Elida Fieldhouse, just when you're always here at Elida, you know it's regional time. Yeah, it gets really loud. We had a great game before this between Harvest Prep and Margareta, and it was a close game, came down to the wire, and it was loud in here. And I'll tell you what, even if there aren't a ton of people, it echoes there, right? <laughs> so this gym gets incredibly loud, but both teams tonight looks like they have a great turnout. The Titans always travel well, and Liberty Center has a lot of pride in their school. So really looking forward to, like you said, the atmosphere as well as the basketball. Our pregame is made possible by, possible by Chevrolet Cadillac. This area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. And Evan, you know, speaking of of Cadillac and keys and all that. We have some keys to tonight's game. And how about Liberty Center? What's it going to take for them to upend the Lady Titans? Well, Liberty Center is up against a really, really tough team that, like we said, likes to push the tempo. So the first key is going to be handle pressure, right? The Titans are going to press up and down the floor. They're going to try to create turnovers. They're going to make it really tough on you to get the ball up the court. So you're going to have to expect that and be ready for defenders in your grill. The second ones compete on the boards. Look, Chloe Glenn and Katie Kaufman for the Titans are very, very good rebounders offensively and defensively. If you don't turn around and box them out, it's going to be a long night for you giving up second chance after second chance. So they're definitely going to have to control the boards. And then the third key is convert from outside. Now, John, they're a team, Liberty Center, that likes to get inside and score at the rim. The Titans know that. They're going to condense and collapse their defense and make it really tough to create any space inside. So if the Tigers can hit from outside and force that defense to come out a little bit, they'll create some space inside and be able to convert at the rim. So it's a tough test. Again, the Titans have a great defense, but you have to spread them out. Yeah, great. Very well said. And for the Lady Titans, the WBL champions this year, they've had an incredible season, 22-3. and three. What's it going to take for them to continue that success? Well, this Tigers team is a great defense, or has a great defense as well. And so the Titans are going to want to get out to a fast start. They want to challenge this defense, get up by a couple baskets, because Liberty Center's offense not quite as good as that defense is. And so if the Titans can get a big lead, it's going to be harder for Liberty Center to climb back into the game. So a fast start is key. Shot selection as well. Again, we're going to talk about defense a lot tonight, John. <laughs> this Liberty Center team is going to challenge you. They're going to make it tough for you to find any openings. And so you have to be methodical. You have to run through your offense, and you have to take good shots. You don't need to force anything. There's no shot clock, as many people know. <laughs> so take good shots. Make sure you're taking care of the basketball. And then lastly, speaking of taking care of the basketball, you have to limit turnovers. This Liberty Center team, that an interesting thing about them statistically, they average 18 steals as a team per game. We're, I said we'll talk about defense a ton. <laughs> they have five players that average two steals a game. That's incredible. That's unheard of yeah. at the high, at any basketball sure. level, really. So you have to limit turnovers. You have to take care of the basketball because this Liberty Center team knows how to get turnovers and get points off those turnovers. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible matchup here in the Elida Fieldhouse. And just in a few moments, we'll bring you that matchup. It's the Division Three Regional 10 it's Regional Semifinal. It's Liberty Center. It's Ottawa Glendorf, and it's right here on WOSN. And welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse as we prepare for this regional semifinal between the Liberty Center Tigers and the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Sturex Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. We appreciate their sponsorship tonight. Good evening and welcome. John Zerby joined by Evan Skilleter, and we're going through the starting lineups right now, Evan, but we have a great atmosphere on our hand. Lady Titans of Ottawa had a fantastic season. They're taking on a, a, not necessarily a rival, but somebody that they may not be as familiar with, the Liberty Center Tigers. Yeah, I think anytime you get down to the Sweet 16, everyone feels like a rival, right? You want to come out, you want to beat them, you're in an intense atmosphere. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Liberty Center is a team that goes about 10 deep, or 
five deep onto the bench. And the Titans get contributions from everywhere as well. You take a look at Liberty Center, they have one player that averages double figures. That's Emerson Gray at 11 and a half points a game. Otherwise, they get good contributions from players like Alyssa Gieske at uh, 4.3 and, and Kaylee Blanton at seven. Peyton Army has 6.3. But on the other side, the Titans also have one player in double figures, but this is a really good offensive team, right? So Chloe Glenn averages 10. Uh, but past that, Katie Kaufman just under 10 points a game. Carson Erford just under 10 points a game. And you'll see it. Both these teams, they don't care who scores. They just want to get buckets every possession. And so it's really fundamental basketball on both sides tonight. And if you're trying to teach anyone, boy or girl, what real good physical defensive basketball looks like, tune in tonight and save this tape because you're in for a good one. Well, that's one of the things you, we've always, you know, being in this area, we knew about Ottawa Glendorf and you touched on already, just the team atmosphere, you know, no one player averaging more than 10 points, several players sharing the load, but defense, I think both teams striving to be great defensive teams, which creates their offensive success as well. Yeah, it really does. And the defense you'll see tonight extends the entire court. For most of this game, both teams are gonna press and be up in each other. They're gonna, they're gonna get their offense from turnovers, from breaking out, from transition, and so, it's going to be important. We talked about those keys. It's going to be important to get out to an early lead and, and really handle that pressure no matter which side you are on. So, again, I couldn't be more excited for this regional semifinal. Sweet 16 action. Best time of the year in Ohio. Absolutely. Ottawa Glendorf coached by Troy Yant. Liberty Senior coached by Tim Davis. Let's get this tip off and let it go in. And Ottawa Glendorf will control the first possession of tonight's game. This is the freshman, Carson Erford, that handles the rock a lot for the Titans. Averages 9.6, hits 36% of her three-point attempts as well. So Erford's going to take it. She's out top looking to get a screen. Screen by Katie Kaufman. Kicks it over to Lily Hazelman. Hazelman back to Erford. Erford thought about it. She's going to kick it out there to Kauf Kimmett. You can see it's a tough 3-2 zone right now. They're moving really, really quickly. It reminds me of Syracuse a little bit, how they keep their arms out and they force turnovers. Here's the first one of the game already. Yeah, pretty critical turnover right away at the beginning. Ottawa Glendorf trying to break that 2-3 zone. Officials for tonight, we have some pretty good ones. Zach Metzger, Bruce Bame, and Christopher Worm doing a great job. It's always during this time of year we get some of the best officials around Northwest Ohio. Ball's on the floor. We got a little scruffle there, and now we're going to get a jump ball. Yeah, Liberty Center will keep possession, but again, that Titan pressure all the way up the floor already causing issues, and they haven't even made it to half court. I think if you are born in Ottawa or Glendorf, it doesn't matter if you're a boys team or girls team, I think you're taught to press at like three years I old, aren't you? I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. So Ellie Muller trying to get the first shot there, misses. Rebound comes down to Liberty Center. They're going to retain possession. Now they're going to go ahead and set up the offense. Nice offensive rebound by Liberty Center. Great job crashing the boards, winning a possession here, but they pass it away, unforced error that time. We talked about turnovers early in the game, and that's the first turnover by Liberty Center. Erford, the freshman, she's going to drive it. Now we have another turnover, two turnovers by Ottawa Glendorf, and a nice block shot by Caitlin Kimmett. And Evan Skilleter's got the game ball underneath his feet right now. Yeah, that was a great block right there by Kimmett. You saw that length, she came over and just knocked that ball away. That's good heads up defense from the Titans. And we'll talk about that a lot. They do a nice job recognizing when they need to slide over and help. So Ellie Moeller inbounds the ball. That's going to be another turnover. Erford's going to take it down. She's going to lay it up and just misses. Great rebound inside. Yes, nice job. Greta Liebrecht, correct? And that's her first points of the game. That gets us two to zero on the scoreboard tonight. Yeah, that was Chloe Glenn actually right there grabbing that rebound, putting it back in. This is what we talked about. You have to turn around and box out because there are some really good rebounders on this squad. It's great that Chloe Glenn is back playing basketball. She was injured early in the season, and now she's back and making a big impact, and that's going to be another turnover there on Liberty Center. I think that's the other cool thing about the Titans is you look at this roster, Lily Hazelman and Chloe Glenn both have had multiple knee injuries, but they are two of the hardest playing players on this squad. I mean, it is just, I think it's in the water in Ottawa, <laughs> Glendorf, just everyone very, very tough. And another almost turnover it is indeed. Well, it's early, Evan, but I'm seeing like a football matchup at this point. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Now a foul, the first one of this game, and we'll have some free throws. That's yeah, going to take Ellie Moeller. She's going to get her first opportunity there, and maybe some nerves. I mean, I know Ottawa Glendorf's been here for a while, but the reality is, is that these nerves are now getting out. We're going to take an opportunity. Our free throw sponsor is Worthington Industries. Ellie Muller is going to get her first opportunity tonight. A lot of times it does take teams a while to settle in, especially like you said at the top of the broadcast, two opponents that aren't necessarily familiar with each other, not necessarily sure how they play. And you can see that right now, just kind of sloppy play as they try to figure out where they're going to get pressured, where they're going to have to be strong with the basketball. And Ellie Muller completes her second attempt. And now Liberty Center finally gets on the scoreboard. Otto Glander up two to one on tonight's ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And we have almost another turnover here. That's yeah, a good job by Carson Erford right there, just playing in between the deep, or the two players, excuse me, splitting the difference and knocking that pass away. But again, you can see Liberty Center, that pressure all the way up the floor, causing the bad pass and the nice turnover. This is the kind of basketball you love to see, the pressure, the great defense. And you're going to see a lot of turnovers tonight, but that's indicative to me, not of, of you know, weakness on offense, but aggressiveness on defense. Absolutely. So it's Ellie Moeller. She's going to kick the ball over to the corner, and that's Emerson Gray, and Emerson Gray is going to draw a foul. Looks like they're going to get that one. Maybe on Katie Kaufman. That's her first foul of the game. That's a good job by Gray taking the ball inside. We've actually seen two good possessions from Liberty Center where they've been able to get inside. I just want to look for them to, to kick it out once they get that defense to collapse a little bit, kick it out and hit some shots from outside. We talked about that as well, being a, a key to this game. This defense is going to collapse and make it tough for you to get the ball to the rim. So if you can get in there, look for a pass on the perimeter and knock it down. Nice pass inside. And what a great block by Katie Kaufman, but followed by Liberty Center now. They get first the lead of their, this game, 3-2. to two. That's a great job by Kaufman blocking that shot, but a great offensive board right there from Kaylee Blanton putting it back in. Missed shot there, but a great rebound by Kimmett, and now she draws the foul. It looks like she's going to be sent to the free throw line as well. Offensive rebounds benefiting both teams right now. Kimmett headed to the line, 72% free throw shooter on 50 attempts this year. So Kimmett's going to go to the Worthington Industries free throw line tonight. Her first shot is up. She's just a little bit short. Well, immediately we kind of noticed Coach Tim Davis's team, their strategy is to take the ball to the hole. And like you said, you know, maybe opening it up by kicking it later, but it's definitely a strategy and a nice second attempt there by Kimmett. That evens the score at three on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Turnover by Ottawa Glandorf, and we're going to get a jump ball. It'll stay with the Titans right there. That's just Carson Herford making herself wide, putting her hands up in the air, knocking that ball away and taking it. And, you know, they're, so far, I mean, we're only a few minutes into this game, but you can already feel the intensity. Both these teams, both these girls getting after it, pushing each other. Ottawa Glandorf in the corner now. I'm going to kick it. Top of the key, Erford. Erford over to Kaufman. Kaufman looking inside. Just going to kick it back out to Carson Erford. Just going to reset the offense here. We've got Micah Aldrich in the game. Skip pass over to Kaylin Grothaus. Grothaus now to Kimmett. Kimmett inside, but she's blocked. Nice block by Kaylee Blanton. That's a great job by Blanton, just staying straight up in the air, using those long arms to force the block. Really, what you see a lot of times is players come over the top and get called for a foul. But right there, she just kept her feet, stayed big, and knocked it away. So Haley Muller. Tries to get the shot off and misses, but nice rebound. Good rebound by Kimmett, and Kimmett pushes it up inside. Now we're going to get a foul. Nice attempt by Ottawa Glandorf. It's going to take them once again to the free throw line. That time it's Grothaus. Grothaus actually didn't play in the midweek, or excuse me, on the weekend matchup when they won the sectional. She was out with uh, some sort of illness, so good to see her back on the floor, and you can see the toughness right there, just welcoming the contact at the rim and earning those free throws. I know they had a few players out because of the illness, and they were still pretty productive in that district final without those two young ladies, but Kaylin Grothaus sinks the first of the Worthington Industries free throw. She's going to get another attempt here, averaging a little over seven points a game. She's been an impact player this year. Yeah, she absolutely has, and, and you mentioned those, those two players were out, but they got contributions from elsewhere. Both Brinkman's played really well that night. 
And uh, again, you, you'll see people, players from both teams that maybe get three or four minutes, but have big three or four minutes. Absolutely. Liberty Center now trying to work the ball. That's Kay Kaylee Blanton, she kicks it back out to Nicole Keller. Trying to run the offense here, great defense by the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. We're gonna get a shot here by B. Barrett. She misses, rebound underneath. Nice rebound by Eliza Jones, but Ottawa Glendorf's gonna come down with it, and Chloe Glenn did a nice job of wrestling that ball away. It's just shark teeth down there. As soon as you get the ball underneath the rim, there is nowhere to go. Great job by the Titans swarming and forcing the turnover. So Kimmett up top, looking inside, trying to get the ball to Glenn. Glenn holds on to it, almost a turnover. She's gonna get it back out. Now they're gonna set up the offense. Lily Hazelman, Hazelman over to Glenn. Glenn back over to Caitlin Kimmett. And we haven't really seen the Titans take the ball to the rim as I say that. <laughs> they do get it there. But they really, against the zone defense like this, you really want to attack and break the defense down, make them collapse some, and now we'll have our first time out of the game. Yeah, first time out of the game. Our timeout sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima. Wapak and Delphus, you can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. What an incredible first quarter so far here, Evan. Yeah, absolutely. And we just like we said, both these teams are going to be tough. They're going to play really hard in those defense. We've seen multiple turnovers both ways. We've seen some offensive rebounds, but as soon as we've seen those offensive rebounds, usually they result in a turnover or a tough shot anyway. So it's been really impressive to see these two defensive teams duel. We appreciate you watching tonight's game, and if you're thankful, you can showcase host high school basketball teams. You can consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. It's been an incredible week. We've had tons of basketball, had people asking us between games, when is this on, when is this streaming? WSN known for their best tournament coverage in this area. Yeah, everywhere I go, when I tell people what I do with WOSN, they're shocked that a, a TV station locally provides so much coverage of high school sports. We're really blessed in this area to have some great people working full-time at WOSN and to have the opportunity to be a small part of that. Absolutely. Liberty Center turning the ball over. Chloe Glenn all over the floor. We're going to get another jump ball. Chloe Glenn, although she missed a lots of time, you know, she had the ACL injury last year. Knee injury early in this season. She's come back slowly. She looks like she's in like late season form. Yeah, and she was a big part of that win on Saturday. She did a really nice job stepping up, playing tough underneath the basket. She scored double digit points. She had a double double actually in that game, 10 points and multiple rebounds. So yeah, she, she's been a fantastic player for the Titans for four years and good to see her healthy here in her senior year deep in the playoffs. So Nicole Keller is going to get it up top. She's going to try to set the offense. And we're going to get an out of bounds. Nice job by Chloe Glenn getting her foot up, kicking it out of bounds. They're going to retain possession. Ottawa Glandor five, Liberty Center three early in this ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Points have been tough to come by. Yeah, absolutely have been. Now we see the Titans in a man-to-man -man defense and a carry called against Liberty Center. So another turnover. I really want to see Liberty Center keep attacking the basket. They really haven't spent too much time in the paint with the exception of an offensive rebound or two. They really need to get this defense to collapse a little bit. We talked about it, and this came directly from their coach. They want to convert from outside, but we haven't seen any three-point attempts yet. So they really need to stretch this floor and create some space. We're going to get a foul here, and it's going to be Liberty Center's third foul of the game. It looks like they're going to catch Gracie Miller with that call, and they're going to keep it here on the floor. But I, I agree, and I think, you know, it's a strategy. They're going to the hoop. They're going to try to try to get that defense to collapse in, but at some point, only three points on the scoreboard going into the end of the, the first quarter. Uh, they're going to have to stretch the floor a little bit here. Ottawa Glandorf. This is Caitlin Grothaus taking it. Arson Erford. She's going to lose the ball, but she retains it. Nice retain possession. Great pass inside. And we got a nice point there by Maddie Liebrecht. It's Lily Hazelman right there. Nice find underneath. That, Lily's a player that plays really tough defense, takes care of the basketball, and now an offensive foul. But you'll see Hazelman all over the court. You'll see her slide over and help on defense, and you'll see her make some really, really tough passes like you saw right there to Carly Brinkman. 
So Ottawa now pushes, Ottawa Glendorf now pushes their lead to four, seven to three. And I feel like the temperature just went up about five degrees in this gym. <laughs> you might be right. It is definitely heating up. Liberty Center still in that zone defense. So Hazelman just had an incredible play on offense. She's going to kick it over to Kimmett. Kimmett back to Hazelman. She's going to try the triple, and she's got it. See her pump the fist right there. Not someone that shoots a lot from outside, but sometimes you have to step up and make some big plays for your team. And uh, like we said it for Liberty Center, but on the other end, it'll be big for the Titans to hit from outside and get this defense second-guess themselves. So Lily Hazelman pushes the lead, and here we're going to get an offensive foul on Alyssa Giesegi. Boy, Coach Yant called that one from the bench, but what a big turn of possessions here in this final few minutes of the first quarter. Yeah, the Titans really, we talked about shark teeth earlier. They're starting to grit their teeth right now. They're really starting to show what they're all about, playing really tough defense, but playing good physical defense and drawing offensive fouls, really making it tough on Liberty Center to move it around. So Kimmett gets it over to Micah Aldridge. Aldridge almost turns the ball over, and they do turn the ball over. Liberty Center with a nice steal from Peyton Army, but she turns it right over. And Hazelman tries to keep it, but looks like we're going to have another turnover. I hope the people at Elida are doing the stats better than what I can do. I tried for about a second. Oh, it's tough. And, and <laughs> yeah. too many turnovers were happening, so we'll just depend on the fine people here at Elida to get us stats at halftime. But it's been back and forth and a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, I really love coming to Elida. They treat you well. They put you in a good spot. And they also do that stats. And they'll have first quarter stats for us basically two seconds after the first quarter <laughs> ends. So I really appreciate all the hospitality Elida shows during tournament time. They host a lot. So we have Emer Emerson Gherkin trying to take it baseline. She kicks it over to Emerson Gray and a missed shot. Nice rebound inside by Gracie Miller, but she misses and a nice good rebound by Erford. And she's going to come to the ground. We're going to finally get a call in Liberty Center. Toughness and grit right there. The freshman, Carson Erford, mixing it up inside. Grabbed the rebound, had multiple players trying to grab the ball. At one point they had it, but she was able to swing it away, draw the foul, and get a possession back for Ottawa Glandor. You know, one thing I always notice, and, and it's not like a, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist or anything, but the minute you get to districts and then regionals, the physicality just goes up by about 100%. Well, you're absolutely right. Part of that is just because the intensity gets up, the, the environment is big. But another part of it is defense wins championships, right? And I'm a firm believer in that. And so you're running into teams that are playing really good defense throughout the entire year. And you just see games like this where everyone is in each other's grill. We've had like 12 jump balls. <laughs> We've had a couple of fouls. We've had players on the ground about every possession. Uh, this is just fun to watch. Old school, hard-nosed basketball. It's been great. It has been great. You know, I don't, I don't have the statistics either, but we haven't seen many three-point attempts. I mean, they are going at it and trying to take the ball to the hole. Yeah, besides that one from Hazelman, no threes made in this game. So Ottawa Glandorf going to retain possession. 44 seconds to go here on the first quarter at the Elida Fieldhouse, the regional semifinal. Ottawa Glandorf holding a slim 10-3 lead over Liberty Center. And Chloe Glenn inside misses. It's going to be a nice rebound by Ellie Moeller. Yeah, that's a shot Chloe Glenn can hit. Just kind of turned awkwardly right there. Nice pass by Ellie Moeller. She kicks it back for the triple try from Emerson Gray. She misses. Nice rebound, but a turnover by Ottawa Glandorf gives Jackson Center the ball, and they're going to get a foul. Looks like they're going to get Chloe Glenn on this foul. Yeah, they will. Glenn with the turnover and then came right back. Tried to set her feet, but just a little bit late getting there, according to the referee, and now free throws. Yeah, today's free throw sponsor is Worthington Industries. You can learn more about their employment opportunities. You can go to worthingtonindustries.com slash delta. And that takes Emerson Gray to the free throw line. Emerson averaging over 11 points a game, misses her first one. Yeah, Gray really wants to get going right now. No points on the scoreboard. And like you said, average is 11.5. Throws in a couple of rebounds and a couple of assists per game as well. And she's been active, taking the ball to the hole and attempting the shots. Just haven't had the opportunity for the shots to fall. She'll miss her second one. Good foul by Ottawa Glandorf as they retain the possession and don't give up any points as Kaylin Grothaus is going to bring the ball up the floor, maybe looking for the last shot here. 
We'll see what they end up running. Usually the Titans like to get the ball to the basket for the last shot. Well, they're going to kick it out to Kimmett. Kimmett's going to, looks like it's going to retain position. She lost it there for a minute. Emerson Gray doing a great job of playing heads up defense. That leaves only 2.6 seconds left here in the first. Liberty Center needs to watch the back side. A lot of times, I've had Ottawa Glendorf a lot this year. A lot of times what they try to do is draw attention closer to the ball and then send someone on a loop to the back side. So we'll see what they end up doing here. They're just going to go up top. Inbound to Chloe Glenn, and she's going to get the last opportunity. It doesn't fall, but still, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, Lady Titans, holding a seven-point lead over the Liver Sydney Tigers on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. You're watching regional semifinal action right here on WOSN. Welcome back here to the Elida Fieldhouse as the Ottawa Glendorf Titans holding on to a 10-3 first quarter lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. Tonight's three-point sponsorship is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. For all your commercial and residential concrete needs, contact Dale's Concrete at 419-943-1077. Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. John Zerby here with Evan Skillet. Are now we're tipping off the second quarter here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Liberty Center is going to maintain possession here, trying to get some points from the, the scoreboard. Only three points scored in the first quarter, Evan. Yeah, the Tigers have had a tough time getting any open looks. In fact, they had one open look for three, and they couldn't put it in. A couple free throws they've missed as well, so really need to start taking advantage of some opportunities here. So Haley Moeller is going to control it. She's going to get it back to Emerson Gray. Gray trying to get something going. A nice back cut there, but Ottawa Glendorf closed quickly. And it looks like the Titans are going to get another turnover. Yeah, and I think it went off Ottawa Glendorf, but Haley Moeller just kind of reached out trying to keep possession and maybe it was a little bit between decisions <laughs> as it went off her hand and the Titans get it back. So Carson Erford, the freshman, doesn't play like a freshman. I love how controlled she is and poised and set in the offense. She kicks it over to Caitlin Kimmett. Kimmett inside, and what a feed to Katie Kaufman. Yeah, Kaufman, nice job right there. Makes no mistake, she's a player that knows where the defense is. When she catches the basketball and it's only one defender or she has some space, she's really great at converting at the basket. Usually one, one step, one move, and she's converted. Haley Moeller misses a great rebound by Chloe Glenn, and Chloe now is going to bring the ball up the floor. She's going to get it to Carson Erford. Erford's going to kick it in the corner. Triple try by Lily Hazelman. Just a little bit long, and now Jackson Center going to come down with the rebound. I think you're okay with that miss if you're Coach Yant, though. You, again, you want that defense to spread out a little bit. Hazelman's already hit one. Might as well let her try. So Gracie Miller tries the triple. They must have heard Evan Skilleter talking in the first quarter because we've had a couple outside shots by Jackson Center. It doesn't fall. Chloe Glenn had came down with a nice rebound, and now they're going to kick it over to Hazelman again. Triple try from the corner, just a little short. What a rebound by Katie Kaufman, and she's going to draw a foul. And again, you see how she likes to attack. She caught that ball, knew exactly what she was going to go and do, put her shoulder down, got underneath the defender, and drew the foul. I love Katie Kaufman's game and how quick she can get to the rack. Yeah, today's free throw sponsor is Worthington Industries. You can learn more about their employment. You can go to worthingtonindustries.com. Katie Kaufman having a fantastic season, averaging almost 10 points a game. She misses the first of two free throws, but Ottawa Glandorf holding a 12-3 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. So some more substitutions from the Titans. You know, we haven't really talked about how quickly they substitute, but this is a team that likes to push the tempo. They like to put pressure on the defense. And how lucky are they to get four or five players that they can go to on the bench, rotate players in, and keep their legs fresh. Coffin misses the second one, but it looks like we're going to have a turnover by Jackson Center and came down with the rebound. That was Haley Moeller, but they're going to turn the ball over, and Ottawa Glendorf is going to have another opportunity here to score. Yeah, I think Moeller's foot was just on the line when she grabbed that basketball. Just a tough one right there. So we got an inbound pass here to Kaylin Grothaus. She's going to swing it all the way over to Kimmett. Kimmett now is going to get a turnover. Jackson Center is going to have possession. Yeah, I understand wanting to attack the basket. We've talked about how important that is, but right there with the skip, they had Kaufman wide open underneath as the defense shifted away. So I wonder if they'll go back and look at that next time. Emerson Gray just going to fire up the long shot. Nice come rebound by Kimmett. She's going to get it over to Grothaus. Grothaus bringing the ball up, and she's going to attack. Nice jump stop. Kicks it back over to Kimmett. Erfer going to get an opportunity. Carson Erford. 
What an incredible shot. And that gives, that gives the Ottawa Glandorf Titans a 15 to three lead. Our timeout sponsor is Lee's Race, Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for your catering needs. We'll continue to have second quarter action right here on WOSN. Welcome back here to Elida as the Division Three Regional Girls Semifinal is underway. Ottawa Glendorf holding on to a 15-3 lead over the Liberty and Tigers. Tonight's sponsor, one of the sponsors, free throw sponsor is Worthington Industries. To learn more about their employment, you can go to worthingtonindustries.com slash delta. Just over five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Liberty Center trying to get something to go offensively. Only three points on the scoreboard. They struggled with turnovers and missed shots so far, Evan. Yeah, definitely. I think they got away with one right there, too. It looked like the player left her feet. But Liberty Center definitely needs to take care of the basketball and convert some shots. They've really struggled from the field so far. So Peyton Army is going to try to make something happen and almost another turnover. And you can see the frustration because of that smothering defense from the Titans. Yeah, and that's a good job by Micah Aldrich right there, just right up in the face of her assignment, able to knock the ball away. So now Liberty Center trying to retain possession here. Nicole Keller getting a steal, steal by Lily Hazelman. She's taking it down, misses the bunny, but Chloe Glenn back. Gets the second chance opportunity, missed again. And she's going to get this one to fall. Oh, man, that's just incredible work from Chloe Glenn. We talked about it. She is just a beast inside. Two offensive rebounds, finishes through contact. What a strange fast break right there, though. Hazelman going up on the right side. It looked like Grothaus wasn't quite sure what she was going to do. So she went onto that right side as well and almost defended that layup. But it results in a three-point play. What an incredible turn of events there for Chloe Glenn staying persistent on the offensive boards. Chloe again, Glenn has five points and that really pushes this Ottawa Glendorf lead over the Liberty City Tigers to 15. Yeah, and don't expect the Titans to reduce that pressure anytime soon. They're going to continue to stay up in Liberty Center's grill the entire length of the court. So Peyton Army trying to get this Liberty Center offense moving. She's going to kick it over to Emerson Gray. Emerson Gray looking inside, trying to make a move, but boy, Lily Hazelman doing just a great job defensively. Chloe again steps in the lane. She almost got the turnover, but... I think that's a, another one that went off the hand of Liberty Center as they tried to pull their hand away. I mean, this Titans defense. Folks, Lily Hazelman has two knee injuries, and she is the quickest lateral defender out there. <laughs> So we're going to get a kick ball here. Caitlin, Caitlin Grohaus doing a great job of running the ball down the floor. And Ottawa Glendorf going to get an opportunity here to try to increase their lead on the ultimate all outdoor scoreboard. The Titans can take their time right now and just kind of move the ball around. No need to force any shots. I don't even know if they're worried about spacing the defense out at this point. Just run your offense, get some good looks. Micah Aldridge kicks it over to in the corner. And we're going to kick it to Kaylin Grothaus. And Kaylin Grothaus with the triple. Grothaus, along with Carson Erford, shoots 36% from outside. She made no doubt about that one. And Liberty Center forced to take another timeout. They're only going to have two remaining after this. It's been a lot of timeouts early. And our timeout sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. We'll return here in just a few moments on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse with the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans hold a 21-3 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. Sponsored tonight, timeout sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock and Delphus. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Emerson Gray for the Liberty Center Tigers are going to try to set something up here. Three points. I'm guessing, Evan, if you would have put, drew this up early in the game, this is not what Liberty Center imagined happening in the first quarter. Uh, definitely not. This is really, really tough basketball. And now another foul. That's already nine fouls against Liberty Center. And we talked about how the Titans will get 
good minutes from all over the bench right now. Megan Horseman into the game. And you can see the great box out underneath. Grabbed the rebound, had two players come around. They'll foul, and now she's going to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and some more free throws. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Worthington Industries. Like you said, Megan Horseman going to get an opportunity. And that's just something indicative of Ottawa Glandorf, that they just play so many players. And even in this time of year, when you have an injury or two like they did a few weeks ago, they're able to have players step up and give you valuable minutes. Yeah, it's really great to have. And they've got a couple JV players on the bench in the tournament as well. And when you get up to a big lead like this, oftentimes some of those players can get some action. So Liberty Center trying to get something going here. It's Peyton Army. Army gets the ball over. She gets the shot up. And now she's going to get herself to the free throw line. Only the third team foul by Ottawa Glendorf. And that's going to put Peyton Army to the Worthington Industries free throw line. Yeah, they desperately need some points right here. And I'm sure the break at the line is going to be nice for them as well. Army shoots 50% from the free throw line. Well, Peyton Army gives Liberty Center their fourth point, trying to look for the fifth here. And I think you said something that you know is pretty good too. It gives them a little break. You can see a lot of you know huffing and puffing because it's been an up-tempo game. Yeah, absolutely. And you can get pretty dejected when you're down 21 to three. Now 21 to five, and again, you, if you can slow things down a little bit, maybe catch your breath, you have a chance to get back into this game. I mean, yeah, it's a 16-point deficit, but still a lot of time on the clock. If you can start to string some stuff together and, and have a nice finish in the last three minutes of the half, you can carry that into the locker room and into the second half. So these last three minutes are, are really big for Liberty Center. And you said something interesting there. They have a 16-point lead, but there hasn't been a lot of points scored. Sure. So you can, you know, you can, I mean, both sides have struggled to score. Ottawa Glendorf has been getting going lately, but both teams not necessarily lighting it up tonight. No, absolutely not. So, again, if your offense can get going, you never know what can happen. It's Person. easier said than done, though, against the <laughs> Titans. Absolutely. Nice take in the hole by Katie Kaufman. She misses, but what a rebound by Chloe Glenn, and she falls down hard. We're going to get a foul. I think she just got called for the foul, actually, on the loose ball. Another nice effort, though, by Glenn, trying to get on the offensive boards. And sometimes that happens. As a coach, as long as your player's not in foul trouble, you're not going to get too angry about them being aggressive on the offensive boards. That is foul number two, which kind of hurts as she has to go take a seat. Certainly not happy about it. But you like the aggression from your squad, putting pressure on Liberty Center on the boards. Only the fifth team foul by Ottawa Glendorf. And they've done a great job of playing aggressive, but playing smart as well. Liberty Center trying to get something going here. Nice triple try in the corner. That's Eliza Jones. Hey, and like we said, start to string some stuff together. That's a 5-0 run, which doesn't sound like much, but in a game like this, it definitely is. So Lily Hazelin with the ball in the corner. She's got it over to Grothaus. Grothaus skips it to Kimmett. Kimmett back to Grothaus, to Hazelman. Great ball movement right now from the Titans. Not phased at all by this tough Liberty Center pressure. Liberty Center draws a turnover. Liberty Center on the move now. Peyton Army looks inside, a nice pass, but a great recovery by Caitlin Grothaus. What a job by Caitlin. Yep, and that's what you get from the Titans. Good hustle getting back on defense after the turnover, knocking it away and keeping it in bounds. So Carson Erfer gets it over to Hazelman. Hazelman left-handed off the backboard. It gets it to fall. It's a really great play by Hazelman right there. She caught the basketball, had the defender closing out on her, recognized she'd be off balance, and she went hard around the left side. And really good touch off the glass and in. Yeah, that pushes the Ottawa Glendorf lead to 23-8 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And Evan, you said something a little bit ago I thought was really interesting. Ottawa Glendorf, you can see that there's a little bit of a I wouldn't say that they're not as being as aggressive offensively, but patience. Yes, yeah, absolutely. They're not taking bad shots. And this is a team, we talked about fundamentals earlier, but this is a team, especially when they have the lead, they just like to relax a little bit. I, and I don't say relax in a bad way, sure. right? I mean, they, they aren't worried about scoring buckets. They aren't worried about pushing the tempo. They'll get the ball down to the half court, and they'll move it around and, and take a lot of time off the clock. And usually it results in a really good shot, like you saw Hazelman attacking that closeout and getting the basket earlier. We get a substitution for Liberty Center. Gracie Miller in the game with just over a minute to go. Ottawa Glendorf creating another turnover. And so Kaylin Grothaus with just 
over a minute to go here in the second quarter. Kicks it over to Lily Hazelman. See, even right there, you saw Hazelman. She could have passed it hard inside, but she didn't need to, so she just didn't, right? She pulled it down. Now, that's not a great look necessarily, but you get the second effort, and my <laughs> goodness, this Titans team is relentless. <laughs> Kaylin Grothaus, she's done a lot. She has just been outstanding so far, scoring over seven points a game, but I feel like she's been everywhere. Yeah, she has seven points right now, going for eight with the Worthington Industries free throw, but I'll tell you what, you, you're absolutely right. She has been everywhere. We talked about her just a couple minutes ago, getting back on defense after a turnover and preventing an easy bucket. It was a nice fast break from Liberty Center. The player paused on the wing and drew the defender out, but Grothaus was able to come down, knock away the pass that was going inside, and then an offensive rebound at the other end, a putback, a foul. I mean, my goodness. And, and <laughs> there are stretches where you can say stuff like this about any one of these Titans yeah. players, right? They are completely bought in, and it's very, very impressive. Well, and I think, you know, even if you're, you're having an off night shooting, maybe, you know, percentages are higher, you're not getting high percentage shots, you still are holding a big lead like this because of your aggressiveness, because of the hustle, and all those things that you had just mentioned. So Grothaus, she finishes the three-point play. That's going to push the lead to 26-8. to eight. Ottawa Glandorf in full control of this regional semifinal. Almost a travel there by Eliza Jones, but she might have got away with one there. Emerson Gray kicks it over to the corner. It's Haley Moeller. Moeller looking to drive baseline, smothering defense by the Titans. Gray in the lane, tries to kick it out in the corner, but what another steal. And boy, guess who it is, Evan? Yeah, it's Grothaus right there, but also pressure from Hazelman that was that forced that poor pass. Now the Titans with an unforced error, which won't make Coach Yant happy because, like I said, when you have the lead, you don't want to don't want to push the tempo too much to where you're making mistakes like that. So between Caitlin Grothaus, Lily Hazelman, Carson Erford, Caitlin Kimmett, Chloe Glenn, boy, they've just been outstanding. Some other ones, Katie Coffin, all contributing tonight. And this is why Ottawa Glandorf with a strong lead, 26 to eight on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard with just under 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Almost Lib a five second call right there, but they're able to get it in. And now if I were them, I'd just play for the last shot, right? Try to get a good look toward the end of the half. Don't give up any more points here. You're already down big. So Emerson Gray, she's in the lane. Nice spin move. She's going to kick it over to Molly Perry. Gray now looks inside to B. Barrett. Barrett going to get herself to the free throw line. Yeah, Hazelman just a little bit late sliding over right there. It was great help defense. She recognized she was going to have to step in and stop the penetration, but she was just a little bit late. Her feet weren't quite there and got called for the body. And again, as a coach, I don't know if you're mad about the effort plays like that when your team's trying to do exactly what you teach them to do, come over, help, get their feet planted. She just was slightly late. So B. Barrett hits her first of the Worthington Industry free throws. And that almost has the Liberty Center Tigers into double digits with just under 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Barrett will get a second opportunity here. And she nails it. One last opportunity for Ottawa Glandorf. Carson Erford's going to take it down. She breaks the press, kicks it in the corner. Corner triple shy. By, by, excuse me, Emma Brinkman doesn't go, but Ottawa Glandorf holding a strong 16 point lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard tonight. That brings us to halftime. It's the Titans 26 and the Tigers 10. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to WOSN as we have a barn burner here with the Ottawa Glandorf Titans up by a large lead 26 to 10 over the Liver Center Tigers. And Ottawa Glandorf doing a great job, doing really everything that they probably had put in the game plan, Evan, and really comes out with a strong halftime lead. Yeah, for as tough as things have been for the Titans to score, they're still shooting 40% from the field, 42% from outside. They're three for seven on three pointers, sponsored tonight by Dale's Concrete, by the way. <laughs> on the other side, Liberty Center, look, it's just been tough. They can't get good looks. They're two for four from the field, 14% just not getting it done. And they've also turned the ball over 15 times, which is definitely uncharacteristic for them, but this is a tough defense they're up against. So the reality is, is that teams, you know, we talked about the keys to the game. So what are some adjustments? Let's first start with Liberty Center. What are some adjustments that they need to make 
going into halftime here, maybe some things they need to talk about in the locker room. Well, they were starting to move the ball a lot better toward the end of the half, and I think if they continue to get inside, kick it out, knock down some shots from outside, I think they'll be in good shape. But again, that's an easier or it's easier said than done, right? That's a really tough task against a really good perimeter defending team. So I don't know, maybe it's setting some harder screens, getting some seams, getting inside, kicking it out, distributing a little bit, and getting some open looks. Um, I'll say it again, I know how easy that is to say. It's a tough, tough task against this Titans team. But then if you look at adjustments for Ottawa Glandorf, I mean, they still have 10 turnovers in this game, right? Sometimes they're getting a little ahead of themselves in transition. So if they can slow down a little bit or at least keep their heads when they are going up against some tough Liberty Center pressure, uh, they'll be in pretty good shape as well. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. Just a few moments, we'll return with second half action. It's the Division Three Regional Semifinal. It's the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans 26 and the Liberty Center Tigers 10. You're watching high school basketball right here on WOSN. Welcome back here to the Elida Fieldhouse where the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans hold a 26 to 10 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. Our scoreboard is presented tonight by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio's distributor for the structure Pergola X Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. John Zerby here with Evan Skilleter and Evan, we've digested it, we've seen it, we've broken it down, but now we have a second half here where the Liberty Center Tigers have to do something to get back into this game. Yeah, and I think it's just a matter of getting good shots and knocking them down. I mean, right now, 14% from the field, but toward the end of that half, they started to get some open looks, and once you see a couple shots falling, you're in pretty good shape. And, and look, we said this. If you're just joining us, we said it right before the half. A 16-point lead feels like a lot, but both teams aren't really hitting shots. So if one can catch fire, we're either going to see a close game or we're going to see a big, big blowout. Chloe Glenn got the ball inside, but she turns it over. Nice job by Haley Moeller to get the turnover, and a good start for Jackson Center to get back into this ball game. Moeller over into the corner to Peyton Army. Army gets it to Emerson Gray. She thought about the triple. She's going to swing it back to Haley Moeller. Moeller misses, and a nice rebound by Otto Glandor. Yeah, see, that's unfortunate. That's a really good look. They've had opening, uh, sorry, open space in the lane, but just not able to convert. So Caitlin Kemet's going to turn the ball over. An uncharacteristic turnover by Caitlin. And Liberty Center now getting up and down the floor. Nice opportunity there, but nice rebound by Chloe Glenn. But then the Titans go ahead and turn the ball right back over. So this is reminiscent of the very first, like, two minutes of the game where we've yeah. just seen them go back and forth in and, and, and turnovers. Yeah, another period of just trying to get yourself sorted out. We have our first foul of the half. I think they got it. Caitlin Kimmett with her first. Immediately, uh, Coach Troy Yance going to sub in. Caitlin Grothouse had an incredible first half. She's going to come in for Carson Erford. Emerson Gray, key player here for the Liberty Center Tigers, leading score. She's going to get the ball inside, kicks it out. There's a triple try, missed triple, and what a nice rebound. And look, I, I hate to say this, it's going to sound rude, but Liberty Center's 0 for 3 on good shots so far this half. Obviously the three lower percentage look, but the two layups that were wide open, just not good misses. And now the Titans take that Lee's timeout. So we're going to stay here. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Lee's famous recipe chicken and lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. And, you know, I think that's, you know, even though it's, I don't think it's a rude thing to say that they've missed open shots. They've had good looks. They just haven't converted. And in these type of situations, in these types of games, to go on to regionals, especially the regional final, you've got to hit those big shots. You do. And, look, we, we talked about this at the top. The Liberty Center, known for their defense, right? Not an offensive team. Not a team that is really well suited to play from behind. And we're kind of seeing that right now, right? And I think this Titan pressure really wears you down. And we're already starting to see some tired legs out there. Liberty Center does go five deep on the bench, but right now they need their big players in there to hit some big shots, and they're starting to get tired as well. Well, they go five deep, but honestly, Evan, we really haven't seen them do that tonight. It's basically been uh, the core group of starters in this game trying to get them going. Here we're going to have a nice take 
by Alyssa Giesegi, and she's gonna be blocked. Nice block by Caitlin Kimmett. Yeah, but you're right, nice take indeed. That was a really nice step through, a little right to left, mini Euro step, but again, <laughs> the shot blocked. They'll keep possession though, trying to get something going. So Emerson Gray in ball, inbounds the ball to Giesegi. That's a good play. Swings it over, and a three-point attempt by Peyton Army, and that's a Dales Concrete decorative stamping three-point triple, much needed by the Tigers. Yeah, that was huge from Army right there. I really liked the down screen that got her open all the way on the wing, and now a foul. That's just a tough one. Only foul number one for Moeller. Yeah, Ella Moeller's going to get that first, that third foul on her. Excuse me, Kaylin Grothaus was Hustling down the floor, trying to get the Titans in transition, and the aggressive defense now gives each team one team foul here early in the third quarter. Chloe Glenn running the point here. She's going to pull up, get it back to Grothaus. Grothaus looking to the corner to Kimmett. Kimmett, nice pass inside, but nice steal by Alyssa Giesegi. Giesegi kicks it over to the corner. We're going to have a triple try. Triple try by Haley Muller, just came up a little short. Now we're gonna get a foul. And the Tigers fans are maybe not too happy with that foul. Yeah, they're not. Kaufman a little bit frustrated with whatever happened under there as well, but either way. Oh, they're actually, are they calling that against? Okay, no, it is against the Tigers. So kind of a, an interesting possession there, but it will be Titan basketball. That was a deep three, by the way, taken by the Tigers. I mean, you, you want to take the open looks because they don't come very often, but also I'm not sure that's the spot you want to shoot from. Well, we've immediately seen a change in strategy already early in this, this half. They're firing up outside shots, and maybe, just maybe, it's the only adjustment that they have right now to get back into this game. Great pass inside to Katie Kaufman, and she's going to get a blocking call against her, and that's going to give her an opportunity to make some free throws here. She's going to go to the Dales, excuse me, the Worthington Industries free throw line. And I'll tell you what, those fouls happen because she moves so quickly when she gets the basketball. The defense did what they should. They come over, they, they help underneath the basket, but because Kaufman moves so quickly once she touches the basketball, they don't have a chance to set their feet. And of course, when your feet aren't set, you're gonna get called for that foul with the contact. So again, really great job by Kaufman turning as soon as she gets the basketball. And Miller now with three fouls. Katie Kaufman, the 6'1 junior, bright future ahead of her, has had a fantastic season, averaging almost 10 points a game. Carson Erfer, what hustle. She grabs the offensive rebound and is also able to drive the foul from Liberty Center. That'll be the third foul against Elisa Gieske. She's going to have to sit down. So Micah Aldridge is going to inbound the ball here. Going to get the ball. Grothaus, Kaylin Grothaus that is. Grothaus going to try to set the offense. She drives looking inside. Lily Hazelman. Hazelman kicks it back over to Aldridge. Aldridge gets it to Carson Erford. Erford back to Grothaus. Here we go again. The Titans being very patient. Not doing too much. Well, as soon as I say that. I mean, that was, that was what they wanted, right? Get to the baseline and try to hit Kaufman. But... This Liberty Center defense knew what was going on. They had a player slide down to knock that ball away. That's good help and good job cutting off the passing lanes. You can see the patience out of Ottawa Glandor trying to create those good opportunities and Liberty Center doing a nice job of being aggressive defensively. Gracie Miller brings the ball up. She's gonna kick the ball over to Peyton Army. Army looks inside, nice pass. Good cut, now it's just an 11 point lead. You just chip away at it. Plenty of time left in this game. You don't have to do anything crazy. Liberty Center doing exactly what they should coming out in this second half. So Gracie Miller cuts the lead to 11. Carson Erford says, nope, we're gonna keep pushing that lead to 13. It's a great job by Erford getting into the soft spot in the defense, noticing she had space, a good touch on the shot. Nice pass inside. Peyton Arm, or excuse me, Haley Moeller had the opportunity, missed. And there's a nice rebound by Ottawa Glandorf. Grothaus kicks it over to Erford. Erford holds her footing. Yeah, she almost dribbled, but realized she wasn't <laughs> supposed to. 
Good skip pass. So Katie Kaufman, nice pass to Erford. That gets it to Lily Hazelman. Hazelman drives the lane, kicks it over to Erford, tries the triple, and hits the Dales concrete three. And that's a great hit from Erford, but you have to give props to Lily Hazelman right there for getting inside, making the defense collapse a little bit, forced Erford's defender to come in and help, and then she just kicked it out for the easy three. Carson Erford really getting things rolling for out of Glandor. If that pushes her total to eight, nice job defensively as Kaylee Blanton takes the opportunity, but a great job by Katie Kaufman to get the stop. So Grothaus going to set things up for the Titans. Micah Aldridge. Nice look inside to Hazelman. We're going to have a foul. Yeah, definitely a foul. They slid over and a lot of contact with the side. I think. Liberty Center fans not happy. I'm not sure why, because that was certainly a hard foul. Well, I think one of the things there, the frustration is, is that Ottawa has been physical. Yeah. And uh, Kaylin Grothaus, you know, she's one that she's guarding the point and she moves her feet well. She has a, a, a great uh, presence about her to use her body. Uh, but with Liberty Center, they do the same things, but just a little too aggressive that's going to draw those fouls from the officials. Yeah. And of course, fans are going to be get irritated when the fouls <laughs> start to get lopsided as well, right? Five against Liberty Center, one against the Titans. But I think you're right. The Titans, they're used to playing really tough, hard-nosed physical defense, and they do a nice job not fouling. I think Liberty Center just a little bit slow to get inside and get to their spots, and it's causing some of these contact fouls. Carly Brinkman gets it over to Erford. Er Erford inside to Chloe Glenn, and she knew it was going down. You see those two. <laughs> Crediting each other. That's the Titan way right there. Those two are just giving each other high fives. Yeah, Chloe Glenn gets the basket, does a nice job getting the defender in the air, absorbing some contact. But she immediately went to the player that passed her the ball, Carson Erford, who did a great job getting inside and being able to dump that ball off. Again, we, we talked about it. These teams don't, or this team, excuse me, the Titans, they don't scare which they don't care which player scores. And now you see, again, another effort play as Erford grabs the offensive rebound and another possession for the Titans. So Erford looking back inside to Chloe Glenn, and now we're going to get a jump ball. No, we're going to get a foul. That's going to be on Chloe Glenn. That's going to be her third. Yeah, you can see some frustration from Liberty Center. A little bit extra after the play. They didn't get called for it yet, but I guarantee you the referees have seen what's going on and we'll have to see what happens. I mean, again, it, it could be demoralizing playing against a team that forces so many turnovers, gets up in your grill, you can't really go anywhere with the basketball. You just have to be careful and keep your head. And I like what you said, when Chloe Glenn put up that basket, I mean, she no sooner did she the ball leave her hands, she's looking for Carson yeah. Erford to give her credit. Yeah, and you, you hit that perfectly, you know, we had a perfect view of it. Just the great team aspect that Ottawa Glendorf has and Lily Hazelman doing a nice job here of. Trying to get the turnover, but Jackson Center is going to maintain possession. Yeah, if you want to see a good defender on and off ball, just watch Lily Hazelman on this entire or any entire defensive possession. She will slide over, recognize when there's going to be a pass inside. She'll get there first. We've seen one time tonight where she slid over late. Otherwise, she's been there at the right time and just does a really, really nice job keeping her eyes on the entire field. Well, the court. She's a soccer <laughs> player as well. That's a field. Kaylin Grohaus did a nice job of tipping that ball. But Jackson Center maintains possession and a nice rebound inside. Oh boy, it's getting a little physical inside. But Caitlin Kimmett's going to turn the ball over and that's going to now excite the Jackson Center fans and Jackson Center going to maintain possession. Yeah, it's a good job by the Tigers right there. Kimmett got that rebound underneath but really had nowhere to turn. And sometimes you'll see teams just turn around and run back on defense, but they recognized she was in trouble. They stayed up and they forced the turnover. There was the pressure you've seen by Lily Hazelman, but B. Barrett here is going to take it inside. A nice play by B. Barrett. Yeah, that was big time right there. Beat a really good perimeter defender with a little spin and a nice finish at the rack. She has four points. Grothaus looking for Erford. Erford over in the corner to Brinkman. Brinkman over to Grothaus. Grothaus to Hazelman. Drives baseline. Jump shot. Nice touch by Lily Hazelman. Look how quick. She went at the defender. We saw that earlier in the first half from the wing. She caught the ball and attacked a girl closing out. Gracie Miller is going to take an opportunity here. Nice rebound by Barrett. She gets blocked, and now Ottawa Glendorf is going to come down with the rebound. Nice rebound by Kaylin Grothaus. Yeah, it's going to be foul number one on Barrett as she tried to reach around and grab that basketball, but too much contact, and that's seven fouls already on Liberty Center. It's going to be one and one or 
double bonus the rest of the way out. When you're facing such a large, large lead, uh, early, I should say early in the, and it's not early in the third quarter, but this early in the game to be in the, in the bonus, you know, you, you can't just go to fouling because, you know, Ottawa Glendale are so good from the free throw line, but you also can't stop playing aggressive either. Yeah, because you know the Titans aren't going to take their foot off the gas. So you have to continue to play tough defense, and maybe that results in a couple fouls, but not much you can do about it at this point. <laughs> so Keller gets it inside to Gracie Miller. Miller back inside or outside to Alyssa Gisagi. Eliza Jones almost lost it there, but... Nice recovery by Gisagi. Gisagi trying to take it to the lane, and we're going to have a foul on the Lady Titans. She got bumped, and now a round of applause from the Liberty Center side. Slightly sarcastically, I suppose. Looks <laughs> like they're going to give that one to Caitlin Clement, her second. Only the third team foul by the Titans. With a little over one minute to go on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, Ottawa Glandorf holding a commanding 35 to 17 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. It's a looking inside, but she's going to kick it. Almost the steal by Micah Aldridge, but we're going to get a triple try. A little bit long. Nice rebound by Gracie Miller, and Jackson Center is going to go ahead and reset things. This is Emerson Gray. Nice pass inside. And Gisagi gets it to fall. I love that right there. That was a big, long step to get through the defense. That's a really nice gather and a really nice finish. So that shortens the Ottawa Glendorf lead to 16, but nice pass inside. And Micah Aldridge gets an opportunity to get on the scoreboard for the Titans. Un unsung hero, Micah Aldridge. She does so many nice things outside of the scoring column, so it's nice to see her get rewarded with a bucket. Carson Erfer gets a block as well. So Ottawa Glandorf going to set up their offense here. Maybe one last shot coming down here right before the end of the third quarter, Evan? Yeah, definitely. They're going to back out. Grothaus probably going to get a high ball screen. She's going to deny the screen, though, get back to the wing. Grothaus going to take the ball to the baseline, misses. She comes up short. Nice rebound by Eliza Jones. Just a few seconds to go here. Liberty Center is not going to get an opportunity. That's going to end the third quarter. It's Ottawa Glandorf, the Lady Titans, with a commanding 37-19 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. We'll have fourth quarter action coming up here. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Ottawa Glandorf 37, Liberty Center 19. For Dale, or excuse me, our three-point sponsor tonight, Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential needs. You can contact Dale's Concrete at 419-943-1077. And our free throw sponsor tonight is Worthington Industries. You can learn more about their employment opportunities. Go to worthingtonindustries.com slash delta. This final quarter of action here on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, the Lady Titans of Ottawa Glendorf holding on to a commanding 37 to 19 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers. And Evan, I'll tell you, even though Liberty Center's been down, there's still a lot of fight in these ladies. Yeah, they're playing tough. I think you get a couple baskets toward the end of that third quarter, you start to believe a little bit more, and they started to knock down a few shots. Carson Erfer getting the opportunity, and that's going to be the triple, the Dales Concrete triple for Carson Erfer. If my math is correct, she's three for three from outside so far tonight, doing a really nice job knocking down open looks as a result of her team moving the ball really well and making it tough on the defense. One of the things you said there was open looks. I don't think I've seen her take a bad shot tonight. No. She's always you know, waiting for the right opportunity and getting good looking shots. Well, and, and we can go back and look at the keys to the game for the Titans. Fast start, they got out to a quick start, got an early lead. Now I know there wasn't a lot of scoring early in the game, but they did get out to an early lead in the first half. Shot selection, you just mentioned it. It's been really great for the Titans. And now limiting turnovers, they have quite a few, yeah. but they're winning the turnover battle, which has been key for them as well. So they're really executing the game plan 
exactly as it's written. So if you're Ottawa Glendorf at this point, you play an aggressive defense, an up and down style play, and that's Emerson Gray getting the ball to fall for the Tigers. Do you slow things down or do you continue with your game plan? I think offensively you can slow things down, but I think you need to continue to keep pressure on this Liberty Center team until they look like they're done putting in that effort or maybe they sure. put in a couple subs. I'm the kind of guy, I, I haven't been a coach. Um, I've thought about it, I, I love basketball, but if I were a coach, that's how I would act if I had a big lead. I would continue to tell my team, keep your foot on the gas, but when that other team looks like they're wearing down or they're ready to kind of call it quits or slow down, that's when we can take our foot off the gas. And typically, you know, teams, when they try to do something that's not them, you don't do it well. So you might as well play your style of ball and continue. Even if you get, you know, this is an opportunity for other players to get in the game. You have a, a, a big lead, not necessarily a comfortable lead, but a big enough lead where you have an opportunity to get some of those younger uh, role players into this game. Yeah, you're right there. And also from a psychological standpoint, if you take your foot off the gas and the other team starts to come back, it is, with research, it's proven that it's really hard to get back to the level you were playing at earlier in a game sure. after you've already taken your foot off the gas. So you don't want to do it too early. And again, I, I think you just keep your foot on the gas. If the other team's going to keep playing hard, why can't you? Yeah, that's very well said. Ottawa Glandorf is going to go ahead and turn the ball over here, and Liberty Center now going to get this opportunity. Both teams, lots of turnovers tonight, but I like what you said just a few moments ago. Ottawa Glandorf winning the turnover battle, which is really the most important statistic. Jackson Center trying to hang in in this game. Liberty Center, triple try here Boom. by Peyton Army. And boy, what a shot in the arm. By Ar Army right there, good open look. She has eight points, two triples tonight. And still just a 16 point lead. Get a couple baskets, you're in good shape. Katie Kaufman's gonna get the opportunity to go through the free throw line. Nice job getting the ball inside and looks like they may bring up Emerson Gray with that foul. It's her second foul of the night. So that's gonna take Kaufman to the Dales Concrete, or excuse me, the Worthington Industries free throw line. A lot of different sponsors tonight. You man. know, this is tough, tough Evan. To you know, I, I'll tell you, I give you guys credit. You guys do this well, I watch a lot. I'm about a ninth string guy, no, so I'm on. really glad that you're here. But yeah, this is this is tough stuff to get yeah, all these sponsors yeah. right. It doesn't matter how many times you've and done it is. It when you have this many sponsors, and we're blessed, right? We're blessed <laughs> we with are. some really we great are. businesses in the area that right. sponsor local athletics. I mean, we talked about the Worthington Industries free throw line, Dale's Concrete, Ultimate Outdoor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima Chevrolet, Cadillac. You think about other sponsors that have done a lot of good for uh, their local communities this year by sponsoring these games and, and letting us or allowing us to cover their local schools. So Emerson Gray, she kicks it over. Ooh, what a, looks like we're getting a blocking foul. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. It looked like Hazelman was in the right spot, was there in plenty of time. We won't have replay for you. Referee saw it differently, and that's going to be some more of those Worthington Industries free throws. But either way, good job by Hazelman sliding off and, and coming over and help defense, just according to the ref, a little too slow to get there. You know, I've been impressed with B. Barrett as well. Yeah. She's kind of come in and uh, been a little bit of a spark off the bench. She's a 5'5 five five, uh, junior, and she's aggressive. She's not afraid to take the ball to the hole. Yeah, and she seems like she's um, kind of gotten irritated in the second half <laughs> and taken some responsibility yeah. uh, and, and taking some liberty to, to get to the ball to the rack. We've seen a couple good step throughs. We've seen her play tough on defense. That's a good looking free throw as well. So now that, now the lead for Ottawa Glandorf, 42 to 25 over Liberty Center. B. Barrett gonna get another opportunity here. She's gonna get it to fall. Yeah, she's a 75% free throw shooter, highest percentage on the team. Great job by her. Grothaus, she's gonna break the press, gets it down in the corner. Nice looking shot by Katie Kaufman, misses, and a good rebound by Kay Kaylee Blanton. And it got knocked away on that pass, but Liberty Center able to grab it. And like I said earlier, Aldrich does a lot of good away from the scoring column. And right there, nice job stepping into the passing lane and knocking that one away. Katie Kaufman as well, and Aldridge doing a great job defensively. Just kind of slow up the Jackson Center. You know, sometimes you get those turnovers, you get a missed shot and a rebound. You want those transitions. Even just knocking the ball out, yes. it stops that momentum. Absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right right there. Let your defense get back and get set. 
So Emerson Gray, she's going to push it over to Barrett. Barrett looking for Molly Perry. Perry back to Gray. Gray. Haley Moeller. Moeller kicks it over to Barrett. Barrett's going to try the triple. A little bit short. A nice rebound by Lily Hazelman. Mike Aldridge knocked it over to her. Yeah, it's a good job by Aldridge just realizing that she can just tip it to her teammate who was wide open, able to bring the ball down the floor. Now it does kind of look like Things are going to slow down out there. Liberty Center going to the bench. I'm sure Coach Ant will see that. Do the same here shortly. So Grothaus kicks it over to Hazelman. Hazelman wanted it, but she's playing disciplined basketball, following her coach's commands. Nice pass to Chloe Glenn. Glenn back to Grothaus. Looking inside, they're looking for Kaufman, and Kaufman's going to draw the foul. That's going to send Kaufman to the Worthington Industries free throw line as now Liberty Center, nine team fouls, almost in the double bonus. And something I just noticed right there was, uh, and, and I don't know exactly what happened, but Kaylin Grothaus must have missed a pass or missed something. Both of her teammates, two of her teammates turned around, let her know. She said, yep, you're right, my bad. They gave each other high fives. That's another sign of a great program is accountability, accepting criticism from your team, recognizing and admitting when you were wrong, and all of you just accepting that, moving on, that's really great team basketball oh, right there. You, you said it perfectly, and it's that, that you know, that we, not me, yes. that humility. And, and you see it. You see it. You know, they, they're happy for each other. They play for each other. It's just a really neat thing, and you wonder why they're in the regional and state tournaments every year. It's no surprise. No, absolutely. And the men, or the boys team plays that way as well. It just the, the Ottawa Glandorf community raises some really, really good team players. So Jackson, excuse me, Liberty Center here trying to get the ball inside is a miss by Gracie Miller. We're going to get a round of applause from the Ottawa Glendorf faithful as Kaylin Grothaus going to go ahead and bring it up here. And still, Liberty Center playing aggressive defense over to Carson Erford. Erford, good defense by B. Barrett. Micah Aldridge over to Lily Hazelman and. Now they're just kind of begging Liberty Center to come on out and foul them. Yeah, I think they'll move the ball around the perimeter as much as they can right here. I don't know if I expect them to have the ball for three and a half minutes, but I think <laughs> if they could, they would. Well, the other night, we're doing a game. It's Fort Laramie. It's Jackson Center. That's why I've said Jackson yeah, Center a million gotcha. times tonight. But, That's tough. Um, Fort Laramie pulled the ball out, and for five minutes in the second quarter, they held Ooh. the ball. And five we just, minutes. Yeah, me and Mark Shine just looked at each other. We had to talk for five minutes, <laughs> yeah. so it was interesting. So I don't think you'll see that out of Liberty Center tonight, which that's going to take Carson Erford to the foul line now. Ottawa Glandorf in the double bonus in the Worthington Industries free throw line. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, there's a big argument for a shot clock to be implemented in high school basketball in Ohio. There are some states that have already implemented it. What do you think? I mean, you've been an athletic director, you've yeah. been a coach, you've been around the game for a long time. Well, I, I, I personally, I, I've heard the argument that it's one more position to hire, one more person at the table. Okay. That's kind of the argument against it as an AD. I understand that, but that's not a hurdle that you can't overcome. Personally, I mean, I, I think it would, you know, it would add to the point total. It would stop this, you know, uh, these these 40 to, to 30 games. Um, but I, I can't really tell you, honestly, will it improve the game? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it would improve the game. I especially think that a, a shot clock being implemented would probably be more like a 40 or 45 second shot clock. You're not going to see 24 like the NBA. You probably won't see 30 like uh, like college basketball. But I could see 40 or 45 seconds just to make sure, again, the teams aren't just holding the ball up top. I mean, that's not great for the development no. of players. It's not great for the product. It's not great for the fans watching the game either. So if we can prevent that somehow, I'd be all for it, but I definitely wouldn't be for an accelerated shot clock or something like 24 or 30 seconds. You know, you want players to be able to, to be able to develop without too much pressure. Yeah, very well said. Under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, Ottawa Glandorf holding a commanding 44 to 26 lead over the Liberty Center Tigers, and OG looking to have the regional final berth. They take on Margareta here Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Fieldhouse and a turnover by the Titans. And now an opportunity by Jackson Center to get the ball 
in the lane. They miss, but Katie Kaufman comes down with the rebound, and now she's going to get an opportunity to go to the Worthington Industries free throw line. And it's a big Saturday for the Ottawa Glendorf community. They've got the men, or the boys, men, boys, all the same, right? Uh, they've got them at 2 o'clock against Spencerville. Yeah. Your guys. Yeah. Over at Lima Senior, and then at 7, the Titans will be right back here, assuming they hang on t to this lead. <laughs> uh, never want to count anyone out till the final whistle, but assuming the Titans make it, they will play at 7 o'clock right here against Margareta. So uh, originally those two games were scheduled for the same time. The state took a look, realized we should probably split those up, and that's exactly what they did. So busy day in Lima for the Titan community. Yeah, but it's fun. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I really give a ton of credit, Northwest District and, and the OHSAA, for making those adjustments. Yes. Those, those communities, they need to support their kids. They need to support their coaches. And, you know, no community supports their teams more than the Ottawa and Glendorf communities. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, the bleachers to our left, which to our left is the Ottawa Glendorf <laughs> side for anyone watching. Um, all of these fans are going to be here Saturday at both games, yep. right? Everyone comes out and watches the games. If they're not, they're watching on TV, which, again, we're blessed to be able to bring them coverage of their squad. There's also some great radio stations in the area right. covering them as well. B. Barrett with the layup try misses. Grothaus comes down after the ball is tipped a little bit. She's going to push the ball up the floor to Erford. Erford back to Kate and Kimmett. And now Erford's just going to hold on to it. Kaylin Grothaus now forcing Liberty Center to you said, come out and maybe potentially foul to. But they're going to play a type of offense here where this game is over yeah. in, in terms of score. But I like what Liberty Center's doing. They're not just going to stand back and let the game end. Yeah, I'm not sure about fouling down 20 with a minute right. and a half left. But, yeah, I mean, it, it is good. You don't – I always tell people this. You can't tell your, your second team players to come in and not play hard. Right. Right. Sometimes you see – I mean, we've seen girls basketball scores, and even in this tournament, that are like 85 to 3. Right. Then that's not an exaggeration. We literally saw – a spread by that much and some people would say well how in the heck like why wouldn't you tell your team to, to slow down or put your backups in well look you put your backups in and they're still good what are you going to tell right. them hey i don't want you to score right. you can't do that no so i now, agree. rousing applause for the seniors from liberty center that's one of the toughest things about tournament basketball is that it's always somebody's last game and a couple seniors on liberty center getting their last action tonight Alyssa gieski peyton army Haley moeller those three exiting the game. You can see the tears on their face. Always a tough part about tournament basketball. So Emma Brinkman getting her opportunity on the Worthington Industries free throw. She knocks down both free throws and that gives Ottawa Glandorf a commanding 22 point lead with just over a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. Some substitutions in the game now for the Titans as well. Megan Horseman in the game getting an opportunity to play here. Looks like Savannah Recker headed over to the bench to check in as well. Jackson Center, get a triple try here and a nice triple. That's Eliza Jones, she hits the uh, Dales Concrete triple. That's her second one of the game as well. Nice hit from right there for Jones as she found herself open on the wing. So Carly Brinkman's gonna bring the ball up. She's gonna bark out the orders and run the offense here. Just over 30 seconds to go here. Micah Aldridge holding on to the ball. Ottawa Flan Flandor faithful on their feet. They're excited. They can smell that regional final. It should be Saturday evening right here at the Fieldhouse. It's the Titans. Will once again reach a regional final and get that opportunity. I'll tell you what, Margaret is going to be a tough team. They've knocked off Harvest Prep. In a close one before this one, the Titans will have a lot on their hands. Kylie Leibacher for Margareta scored 28 points today, a fantastic player. But I'll tell you what, I don't think Margareta's seen a team quite like this Ottawa Glendorf team defensively. Should be fun on Saturday evening. That's our final for tonight. We'll be back here with post game comments and statistics. It's the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans 48 in the Liberty Center. Tigers 29. You've been watching high school basketball right here on WOSN. 
Welcome back here to the Ida Fieldhouse where the Ottawa Glandorf Titans have just gotten themselves back into the regional final with a big win over the Liberty Center Tigers, 48-29. to And Evan Skilleter, we're here just kind of wrapping things up. And what an incredible effort we've seen from both teams tonight. But really, Ottawa Glandorf showing their dominance in this region. Yeah, the Titans did a really nice job all game, putting a lot of pressure on Liberty Center. But I'll tell you what, the second half was very interesting, contrasting with, or contrasted, excuse me, with the first half. At the half, Liberty Center had 10, or excuse me, 15 turnovers. They ended up this game with only 16, Wow! right? Yeah. So they ended up with a, a really good second half in terms of taking care of the basketball. They raised their shooting percentage as well, but Liberty Center known as a very good defensive team. The Titans shot 48% from the field, five of nine, 55% from outside. Wow. So despite that great defensive pressure, the Titans were able to move the ball around quite a bit. They got contributions from all over the place. Carson Erford with 11, Caitlin Kimmett had eight. I mean, you look down the board, seven, eight, seven, eight, two, 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 one. I mean, just a lot of different players doing a lot of great things for the Titans who end up obviously winning this one big but again that second half Ottawa Glendorf only won it by two it's amazing I would never I would not have guessed that and that's why it's so interesting to see the the statistics the analytics of it that you know Jackson Center battled no matter what the the lead was at halftime they battled and got back into the game even though they couldn't overcome that big lead at halftime yeah and I want to correct myself it was three points uh, the, the Titans won the second <laughs> half by three my wife a math teacher she wouldn't be happy if yeah. I messed up that math but yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that uh, the Titans are going to be a tough out. Uh, they got a really good chance against Margareta in the regional championship on Saturday. And then uh, we'll see what happens in Columbus if they can get over that regional hump. All right. So that's the final here. It's the Ottawa Glandorf Titans, 48, over the Liberty Center Tigers, 29. Just like Evan said, Saturday night they'll take on Margareta at 7 p.m. right here on WOSN. You can check that game out. Uh, right here on WOSN. Appreciate our crew tonight. What an outstanding job by Megan Sherritt, Cassidy Driscoll, and Caitlin Henderson. Really just did a great job for us. And appreciate Kelly Getz and Nick Fraley back at Master Control. What a fun night we've had here tonight. We've had more games tomorrow as well. It's been a busy week at WOSN. We're excited to bring all this to you. For Evan Skilleter, this is John Zerby saying so long, everyone.